finally here again. <laughs> so welcome to the new Nevis. This is a uh, the new and improved Mads Bongo Nevis, who's a 1995 Bongo after this conversion. And as you saw on the the screen before, I started this conversion in November 2020, and it is now January 2022. So it's taken me about a year and a half to get to this point. But bear in mind, we have been in the middle of a pandemic. Parts have been quite difficult to get for the van. So I thought today what we'll do is just take you around Nevis so far. I think this is him pretty much done. I've got one thing to get him booked in for, and that's a diesel heater. But um, I'm far too scared to try and attempt that myself because it's like one of those um, really scary things if they go wrong. I'm going to leave that to the professionals. So I'm currently um, standing on my middle bench seat. Um, and the reason for that is because it's actually facing forward just now and I'll show you that in a wee second. So I'm just going to take you down here where it's a bit more comfortable and I'll talk you through what I've been doing. So you may have been following me on this journey and um, if you look at the last couple of videos I've put out with my sort of van life -y sort of videos, the first one I think was the rear conversion build and then which was the old rear conversion. I think that was conversion number one. <laughs> I went through quite a few before I got the one I wanted. And then the second one was the vinyl floor layout, which I'll obviously talk you through that as well. And then the last one I think was me putting in the new kitchen. Or did I film that? I can't remember, it's been such a long time now. But uh, the, the, the rear kitchen was an absolute challenge to put in, but it has made such a difference to the van. Um, which means you've got all this space here um, to put your bed down and have your dining area and things like that. So it's a wee bit better. And there's three of us who travel about in this van, so we needed the extra space for that. Also, we've got the we've still got the bed up there. Nothing has changed up there. It looks exactly the same. I've still got the, the foam, which um, I'll show you the foam that I've got. This is what it looks like. It's sort of that sort of thickness. I think it's about two inch foam. Um, and that's all up the top of the, the bed area there. So they've got a pretty comfy sleep up there. And it's really good canvas I have to say now that I've actually been using it for a year and a half um the canvas is really thick up there and it's really waterproof as well at the moment I'm in Glencoe I thought I would bring the van up to one of the most beautiful places in Scotland and it was supposed to be snowing today and it's not which is probably a good thing because it means it's been dry and I've been able to get some really cool exterior shots of the van just to show you what it looks like on the whole I'd say that outside the van hasn't really changed much um, apart from some mechanical repairs which I'll go through the entire list of everything I've done to the van at the end of the video mechanical repairs has pretty much been the only thing a couple of cosmetic things but not too much most of the cosmetic stuff has been on the inside of the van so just to make it feel a little bit more homely and um, the only thing that had me in a bit of a panic this morning was the leisure battery the leisure battery completely failed uh, yesterday i took it home tried to charge it on the wee charger thing and it just kept tripping it so took it out to the van got the jump leads <laughs> and jump started the leisure battery and i don't know if that's safe to do so so don't try it just in case it's not safe they all must be going home it's like a convoy here i'm in Glen Etive just now or well, just the start of Glen Etive. So Etive Moor is on my right hand side and that's the, the road down into Glen Etive. be beautiful today actually. Oh, I completely lost track of what I was saying. So I jump started the leisure battery, uh, gave it a full night's charge because it didn't trip the charger when I brought it back in. Gave it a full night's charge and the charger actually said ready and maintained so I felt it was safe enough to put back in the van. So far it's working absolutely brilliant. We've been charging up the Mavic um, Pro batteries and some of the camera batteries have been getting charged up in it as well so it's been absolutely brilliant it's been working absolutely fine so panic over i think i just let it drain for too long um, and it, it's just gone completely dead so i've been using the van maybe once a week to take it for a run just to keep it ticking and ticking over but i've noticed that it's a bit sluggish and i'm going to have to get it serviced next week so um, it's due anyway so it's, i may as well just get it all ready for summer and hopefully that'll sort out all the sluggishness of it it's probably just jealous because i've got a mini now so just to talk you through some of the stuff in the interior of the van right so the cabin does look pretty different from the last time you saw it um the dashboard pretty much the same center column has now been spray painted black and we've got some sort of leather added to the top of it and that's to match the new seat covers which are on the two front seats and the, the middle bench seat here which looks like that so i got some really nice leather seat covers from ebay i think they were about 90 pounds for the whole set and they're beautiful quality really well like really well made beautiful stitching sort of light gray and black um matches the interior of the van really really well so i was really happy with them they look better than actually what they do in the picture so the only major difference to the front cabin was the footwells and the back of the the sort of center column here have carpeted the whole lot 
uh, with a sort of dark grey. I've also carpeted the door cards, which are, th which are sort of stretchy sort of fabric that you get in the vans anyway. A lot of people put them on like roofs and use it as part of their insulation, but I've literally just used it for decorative purposes because it looks good. Um, and it does make the van feel a wee bit cosier, just having that sort of fresher sort of colour about it as well. It was very dirty brown carpets that were in before and I just didn't like them. So I just uh, literally glued over the top of them just to be an absolute lazy person and then cut really neatly around and make sure they were all tucked in and stuff so it looks good and it just adds that wee bit extra length a wee bit of extra layer of warmth to the front of the cabin as well so i'm quite happy with how it looks at the front i've also put up a, a curtain here which you can't see but it's there and it's a sort of thick blackout blind um, and at the moment it's been hung with a, a cord which isn't the best but the back curtains up there are being held on by a rail and they're much better and they they're they're solid they're like stuck onto that metal part of the whatever that metal part there of the boot that's what the, they're sort of screwed into so they're a lot better quality and they're, they're the ones i had up before was basically just like a, a kids nursery blackout blind that i had nicked <laughs> so much better so just before i put the roof down i'm going to show you how much space is actually up there in bed mode because i don't think i showed you that in the original video so i'll show you that just now and let you see how it looks so this is a roof um loads of space up here that's the hatch and that flips back over to where i am just now and if i flip you this way you've got all that space there at the front as well um, and this is generally where your head goes if you're an adult um, if you're a kid you generally sort of start sleeping from here all the way down and then that gives you all that space down there to sleep it's absolutely brilliant plus got a sunroof as well and your own little light as well which is really cool obviously i can't really show you the, the van in bed mode just now just because i've got the seats facing forward so these rear seats here or these middle seats are facing forward um so they won't or well, they will lie back but they'll hit off the platform at the back if i had it with me which i forgot to lift it so i can't show you in bed mode but basically what happens is these seats get flipped back around again so they're rear facing into the van so we're getting this way and we're looking at the back of the kitchen and then they flip back so they're basically coming back like that and there's a sort of carpeted platform that goes across the middle which bits there and there you go so that bit there that's basically what the platform sits on and that becomes a bit of your feet now, the only problem is the toilet is just a little bit too high to be sort of comfortably sit underneath it so i have to put that half sort of take that half off put it down there and then put the platform across and that forms a bed and the bed also has this really cool thick uh, cushion which goes across the whole bottom and that's basically the whole bottom of the bed it's super comfy and it basically is the full length of the inside of the van so let's move into the back we've got so over here we've got the new ridge monkey which i'm hoping to use that later to make some food and in here we've got just get a little light on we've got tea and coffee stuff in there you can't really see it cups and bowls and that one and then under here we've got oh, look at that view um the stove and the sink and then obviously that's the the curtain reel i was telling you about we've got i can't i've had to like sort of strap that down onto the plastic there to stop that from moving about when we're drive day uh, when we're traveling but there's a sink and there's a couple of big steaks in there for later. Oil and hand sanitizer and sun cream and stuff. And that's all of our washing up stuff. That is where the fridge is plugged into and that's basically running off the leisure battery. So that's a 12 volt fridge and that is literally hooked right up to the leisure battery, which theoretically means that when we're driving, it's continually getting charged. So it's fine to keep on when we're driving. When we're not driving then it's running purely off the leisure battery i think it only lasts for about six hours which is not ideal so i'm going to try and maybe get a solar panel put on the top and then link that up to the fridge so it's the only thing that will be kept on the solar panel hopefully that means it will last a wee bit longer than six hours when we're off uh, when we're not driving i mean it's a fantastic addition to the van see just having cold milk for a cuppa and things like that and being able to store food absolutely well worth it absolutely love it very tricky to keep it powered that's all as you saw in the back under the boot We've got a seven liter, sorry, we've got a seven kilogram butane gas bottle and we've got two massive 10 liter containers. So we've got one for fresh water, one for wastewater. And then when we got home, we just dispose of that as, as you do. So, oh yeah, we've also got like a bucket and things through there just for, it's one of those little fold up buckets. Um, and that's in case we ever have to use a shower, which um, hopefully we don't have to, but we are going to be doing the North Coast 500 again, probably March time or April. So um, we might have to get that shower out 
unless it's freezing cold. Oh, one last thing I'm going to show you. This is a new power pack. And this is only a 388 watt hours one. Charges when we're driving. So it's brilliant. It means it's continually charged. And then obviously it doesn't run anything like the fridge or like a heater and like that. It's not strong enough for that. But for laptops and phones, it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's got this wee bit on the top here. You can just see that bit there. Oh, there you go. Which means if you've got one of these, it'll start charging my phone basically as soon as I put it up on that. And that's awesome, which means I don't have to worry about wires and stuff because I'm always losing them. It's got two uh, 240 volt sockets on the front. Um, it's got three USBs on the side, plus you've got your DC output on that side. And then on this side, you've got a cigarette lighter one. Two awesome bright lights, which if you're stuck for lighting in the van, they're fantastic. They're really bright. So I checked the reviews on loads of different kinds of these before I bought this one. This was about £250 from Amazon, um, but when I clicked on it there was a massive, um, I think it was like a £50 voucher or something on Amazon, so I just clicked on it and, and bought it there and then because £200 quid for this and it's just that peace of mind that you don't have to worry about your phones dying or like the leisure battery dying, which we know has happened before, like all that sort of stuff is just completely take your mind off, we don't need to worry about it anymore. I mean a wee bit of money, but 100% worth it. I should mention as well that if we do get a solar panel for the van, that can also get charged via solar, which is awesome. Okay, so here's now the fun bit, how much did all this cost? So this is everything mechanical, cosmetic, um, like, but I don't think I included the button, but, <laughs> but everything else is going to be included in this list. So the, the toilet I don't think is included here, no it's not. Everything in here, so I've even got a new, I don't know if you can see it, there's a new table there as well which is that nice dark grey. So the first thing I got done when I first got Nevis was I got a diesel leak fixed, which was great. That cost me 140 quid. Then we got a coolant flush and a bleed along with a radiator replacement, which was 350 pound parts and labor. We then had a water leak, which was also resolved with the radiator getting put in. Then we had to get suspension arm drop links, rear drop links and bushes, which was about 100 odd pound. Um, the auxiliary fan belt got replaced. The aircon fan belt got replaced. The glow plugs uh, were purchased but not fitted yet because the apartment the mechanic said there was nothing wrong with mine. The rear trail and arm bushes were replaced. The exhaust was replaced. That cost £120 plus £240 labour. Um, something called a CV boot was replaced. <laughs> that was 40 quid. New front and rear brakes and discs, which was um, £160. New fuel, uh, new fuel gauge, which was uh, 80 quid. Four new tyres, £160. New fog lights, £7, which was me, I fitted those. Electric hookup on the back, which was 30 quid, and I installed it, and it's fine, I hope. Uh, new fan belt, I think I said that one already. Front bushes and drop links are also replaced, 40 quid. New leisure battery, 60 quid. Portable power pack, £200. My Ridge Monkey, 20 quid. Uh, the 7 kilo butane gas bottle was 15 pound. Blackout curtains, I got them for 20 quid because I got them off a guy from Facebook Marketplace and they come off of a Volkswagen Type 5. <laughs> so I got them for 20 quid. And they're really good Vanex ones, so I was really chuffed with that. Um, full service will be 160 pound on the 14th, so that'll be getting done as part of this year's finance. Um, leather seat covers were 80 quid. New vinyl floor was 30 pound. And then I laid it myself, as you saw in one of my previous videos, really badly. Um, my new table was £30 and I also purchased an Obelink awning, which is amazing. I don't think I've showed you guys that yet, but the next dry day, nice summer weather we have, I'll get it out and show you. It's amazing, I absolutely love it and it's so easy to put up. I didn't want any faff with an awning. You get some that are just absolute faff, I didn't want that. It's just a literally two pole mechanism and it's up. So the total cost, Actually, I should say that the work still to get done to Nevis is rear arches replaced and the driver's side sill replaced and then painted. So that's probably going to cost me about £1,500, I'm estimating. I don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, but I'm saving up for that. So that's the next thing to get done. But I'm hoping to try and get that done in springtime and that way he's ready for straight into adventures. I mean, he's ready now, but just for that bit of peace of mind. So cosmetic work. We haven't even started on cosmetic work yet. Central locking had to get fixed. Uh, we had to get new keys cut because we didn't have enough. We got new wipers blades and wipers the bodywork i fixed some of the bodywork on the bumper and the rear bumper and um, i replaced one of the light clusters so it was about 120 pound for that so the total cost of work everything was 2217 pound and i've still got to pay 1500 pound for the rear arches yeah it's been quite a journey i have to say a year and a half down the line and finally i finally have the camper van that i've always wanted so the only thing left to do is when i've got my wee boy with me i'm going to flip these seats into the front facing mode so that he's got access to the seat belts but when he's not with me 
the seats will be flipped and they'll be rear facing and I'll have the full sort of space that's available in here which would be amazing so I'll probably do that when I'm doing like photography trips and stuff he's maybe staying at his grannies <laughs> I'll have uh, the seats facing and in the van so that you've got the full space and the full use of space I, I don't know how I feel about it I feel like I'm not quite finished I suppose anybody with a camper van probably feels like that but I feel like I haven't quite finished I feel like there's still so much to do and I know there's not really it's just really solar panels arches like things like that um, and it's really just a case of enjoying it now but I kind of feel almost scared to say that like I'm, I'm almost at the end and I almost don't want it to end I think I think that's what it is I think I just don't want it to end because I've really enjoyed the whole process um, I would definitely do it again 100% I don't think I'll be changing the interior of this van again but I'm already talking about buying another one <laughs> so, so who knows it might be Nevis 2.0 I don't know nothing too scary I mean I have no experience at all with mechanics or bodywork or camper conversions <laughs> And we did this, we did this and we didn't mess it up. So I'm quite proud of it, I have to say. Oh, it's minus four out right here just now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little converted van tour. I'm gonna go and have some food. I'm absolutely starving and I've got some steak in the fridge, which I always said that as soon as the van was done, I was gonna celebrate with having some steak in Glencoe. So here we are. There's gonna be much, much more. I'm pretty sure I'm probably not finished with Nevis. <laughs> so I hope you'll stay with me for the adventures that we're gonna be having in Nevis and um, all, all over Scotland. I've already got um, a trip planned for the first week in February and um, I cannot wait to get back out. So I'm gonna brave it without a diesel heater this time. We'll see if I manage it. <laughs> but um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you like this video, then like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye!